Welcome, one and all, to the mystical world of Felbar. Adventures abound throughout this realm, and we appreciate the opportunity to regale you with some stories from these trails. These accounts are all based on actual RPG experiences that occurred within Adventures in Felbar. Some of these tales may be for mature audiences, while others may be for very immature audiences. We now present the sage Mikas Tumo from Tamel, also known as the Bard of Felbar. Welcome to session Fartuk-71. Last time we were with the group, they had arrived at a mining colony called Camp Geldor. After discovering that the party had been on the adventuring trail a while, the gnomish owner of the camp asked if Cabe would do a presentation for the miners as they had very little entertainment in this part of the countryside. Cabe jumped at the chance, but it soured quickly as he learned the last time a performer attempted to sway the audience, there were dental problems. The bard gave an excellent recitation of what the party of adventurers had seen and done and kept the rapt attention of the hardworking men and women of the camp. His presentation was rewarded by accolades and gemstones from the happy miners. We rejoined the group the next morning after a very late night of partying. Lady Irena threw open the entrance to the group's tent, causing sunlight to flood in upon Fargus and Bolger. Both individuals had imbibed heavily in the spirits offered by the miners and weren't feeling quite well. Their angry retorts garnered a smirk from the female mage as she went out to the camp to locate where the tasty smell was coming from. Cabe snored loudly and the other two males tossed blankets over their heads as Sister Elaine also stepped out into the sunshine to join Lady Irena. The pair found the aroma of biscuits and gravy overwhelming and quickly sought out the source. Several men and women responsible for the food preparation had slept in as today had been declared a holiday, but they had since risen and meal service had begun. The mage and cleric were waved over to the tables by Tyra, who gave them a plate heaped with food. When the two women asked how much it was, Tyra scoffed and waved them off. The ladies headed for a table but were called out by name. The gruff voice came from the owner of the mine, Geldor, who asked if he could have the pleasure of sitting with them. All three bore down on the food quickly as the smell was extremely pleasing and the taste even more so. Casual conversation between bites followed and the two females found out that their host, Geldor, was exceptionally pleasant. Quite unlike the tics and foibles exhibited by their sailor associate, and at one point the gnome inquired how much of Cave's story was the truth. The women were taken aback and pointed out that it had all been true and that Cabe was a horrible liar. A look of surprise took over the gnome's face and he pointed out several highlights that were interesting to him. Geldor was in awe that the group was so cohesive and had done so much in such a little time. He pointed out that it was a simple miner and thought that he had seen a lot, but was very congratulatory of their exploits. After a few more spoonfuls a sullen look took over his face. I am sorry about Welby, he stated. He sounded like he was a fun person. The women went silent as the memories of the halfling flooded their thoughts. Lady Irena stopped eating and attended to her feelings, while Sister Elaine had to come with, to grips with the loss and thank Geldor for his thoughts. <sighs> Welby was... <laughs> well... He was just a troublemaking shit, to be honest, but he was our friend, said the cleric. Geldor doubled over in laughter before composing himself and waving off the look from the mage. No offense, ladies. I had a halfling friend once, and they were always troublemaking shits. He laughed again, and the ladies joined him with their own laughter about their lost friend. The miner wiped away a few tears and nodded behind the women, pointing out that the youngest member had obtained the attention of the children in the camp. Sister Elaine and Lady Irena turned around to see Karina and Peepers playing with the children. She had apparently been there a while as Peepers and the children seemed to be quite comfortable with each other. They turned back around to see a gleaming Geldor. That, ladies, that is the future of our world. Children bring out the best of us, and your young associate is one of them. The ladies nodded in agreement as the gnome rose to his feet and placed the eating utensils in a bucket before heading off to see the children. Both women hastily finished their plates and joined Geldor as he watched the waif interact with the kids. After several minutes, a puzzled look came over Geldor's face and he grabbed one of the children. 
Where are Mori and Sandal? he asked. The small child turned and pointed to the mine entrance as a look of horror crossed the gnome's face. Balderdash! Tyra, raise the alarm! The old miner began to sprint towards the entrance. The sound of clapping skillets raised the alarm and was audible all over camp. People answered the call and observed Geldor and the three ladies running towards the mine. The cleric and mage peppered Geldor with questions as he plunged into the mine, looking around at the dirt on the floor. Grabbing a torch, he quickly lit it and began to explain that the twins had been wanting to get into a certain spot in the mine that is forbidden. The women were in close pursuit as Geldor ran down several tunnels before reaching the end. Damn it! he exclaimed as the group found some boards on the floor and a small opening in the wall. Puzzled, the adventuring ladies still did not understand until a loud shriek was heard coming from the small opening. Without hesitation, Karina barreled past the squat miner and dove into the hole, disappearing quickly. A moment later, she popped back out, grabbed a lit torch from Geldor, and plunged back into the hole. Sister Elaine and Lady Irena noted the size of the opening and were exceptionally concerned. A look of grim determination appeared on the mage's face as she too plunged into the orifice. Another scream and Sister Elaine attempted to enter, but her frame was too large to make it. Peepers began to smash his head into the wall, attempting to gain entry, but he too was too large. Several workers arrived and the cleric ordered one of them to retrieve their associates and bring some picks to enlarge the hole. More screaming and a strange hissing noise could be heard from the tunnel, followed by the screams of the elven woman yelling, RUN! RUN! Sister Elaine and Geldor began to smash at the opening with picks, just as Fargus, Bulger, and Cabe arrived to figure out what was going on. With the gnome and cleric tiring quickly from their rapid burst of stonework, they flipped their tools to the others, who quickly began to bash in the tunnel to make it larger. After several minutes, Bulger dropped his pick and dove into the opening, followed by Cabe, who was slowed by the former sailor's slow progress in the tight tunnel. As Cabe's feet disappeared, Sister Elaine and Fargus began to smash the rock again, hoping to make an opening large enough for them. A few moments later, Geldor dove into the opening as the ranger and cleric were taking a break. We close out this episode now and give you our thanks for listening. Please subscribe to this podcast and don't forget to follow us on Twitter at The Bards Podcast. For everyone in Adventures of Philbar, thanks for listening.